Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We acknowledge, as other speakers have, I acknowledge that we're standing in traditional territory of the Algonquin nations, and in their language, say thank you, miigwech. I can speak in the language briefly of the place where I come from. The speaker recognizes me as the member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Saanich is an anglicized Sanchothan word, and it is Osanich nation, and it is the nation of indigenous peoples that straddles both sides of the artificial border that separates the coast Salish people, the territory of the Salish Sea, that, uh, not observed by our southern resident killer whale population or a division noticed by the wild salmon that inhabit our territories, but in the language of the people that I'm honored to live on their territory, I raise my hands to this place in the gesture of honor and respect and greeting and gratitude and say, Heishka, Heishka Siam. As we look at this bill, it is a moment for gratitude. It's a moment to acknowledge hard work. As all the other members who've risen in this place today have noted, I was particularly touched by the personal reflections of the minister as she described the scene on that day when the agreement was signed. The signing of the agreement by uh, the Honorable Minister on August 16th of this year is an historic occasion. Having a bill like Bill C-61 universally supported in this House to recognize the rights of self-determination as they relate to education of Indigenous children is an important step. Certainly, Grand Chief Patrick Madabi has said very clearly, quote, these 23 communities will be in the driver's seat in creating a great future for their children. The impacts of colonialism in particular around the world with Indigenous people, they kept us uneducated and in poverty. And I think education is the key to our future where we build capacity and we take over and run our own lives. These sentiments were also reiterated in a letter that was sent to all of us as members of Parliament urging us to pass this legislation from Chief Shining Turtle of the Whitefish River First Nation, in which he told us that the Honourable Minister had joined with his community for the historic signing, which he describes the Anishinaabe Nation Education Agreement, a self-government agreement that recognizes Anishinaabe lawmaking powers and authority of education for approximately 8,000 children from junior kindergarten to grade 12 on and off reserve. This is an important step for the Anishinaabe nation, but it's an important step for Canada. Other members have already noted, as did the minister, that perhaps this is a template, that the next set of agreements for self-education, self-government over education, need not take decades to arrive at an agreement to arrive at transparent financing, to arrive at the rules by which we, we'll, at long last, say, Indigenous children, hang on to your language. Be proud. Be very proud of who you are. When you look back at the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and I want to quote briefly from the report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, in discussing cultural genocide, in which the TRC report says, cultural genocide is the destruction of those structures and practices that allow the group to continue as a group. States that engage in cultural genocide set out to destroy the political and social institutions of the targeted group. Land is seized, populations are forcibly transferred, and their, motion, their movement is restricted. Languages are banned. Spiritual leaders are persecuted, spiritual practices are forbidden, objects of spiritual value are confiscated and destroyed, essential life services such as education, housing, clean water, medical care are restricted and substandard. In dealing with indigenous people, Canada did all these things. As we turn, that's a close quote from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, Mr. Speaker, as we look at this agreement, it's a very significant step on the path of reconciliation. 
We know we have a burden as settler culture people. The burden of reconciliation is mostly on us. Yesterday, I had the honor of putting questions to the uh, soon to be, we hope, new Supreme Court Justice, uh, the, uh, um, Madam Justice Sheila Martin. And she said the most significant work she'd done in, her, done in her life was working with former Supreme Court Justice Peter Corey at the request of Phil Fontaine, former First Nations Grand Chief, to work on a settlement relating to the residential school issue. She felt that every survivor of residential schools was deserving of a payment regardless of what they could prove they suffered or not. The system itself was one of imposed state-enforced bureaucratic cruelty and was an instrument of cultural genocide. But she said this, and I'm as close as possible, Mr. Speaker, I want to quote her. She said, first we need to find the truth, then reconciliation. So for settler culture Canadians, we need to know the truth, the truth of residential schools, the truth of more than a century of efforts to eradicate everything that makes Indigenous people truly Indigenous to their own culture, spiritual values, identity, and nothing is closer to identity than the language you dream in, the language you think in, the language you speak with your children. And this, this step, this concrete step in Bill C-61 is an important step on that journey to real reconciliation. And as we take more steps, I'm conscious all the time of how do we ensure that the will of Canadians from coast to coast to coast stays consistent with the difficult job we have to do in reconciliation with First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples, that we spread this work of education and rights to self-government on education. I spoke earlier in some of the only language, the only words in Senchothan that I know, but it certainly is inspiring to me that on the Sartlet Reserve near Brentwood Bay in my riding, is a tribal school in the name of what we used to, of what we call an anglicized it's mount newton and i will not pronounce it properly in senchothan but it means the place of refuge and this tribal school the startlip nation tribal school which is available for the children of the first nations communities on the saanich peninsula has immersion in senchothan so children are now playing again speaking their own language and what's really important is that the kids who are learning Senchothan are proud and they know they're cool. They play in Senchothan, they sing in Senchothan, and as each year in this school progresses, and they base this on educational programs for immersion in indigenous language that was picked up from Hawaii, each year that they go forward in the school system, another grade is added. So more and more children in this area, on the territory where I live, which is a Senchothan word, Asanich, which means the people rising, in that territory, more people who are non-Indigenous know more Saanich words, more Senchothan words. And it changes, as one of my colleagues said earlier, it changes our own sense of where we live in our own geography. Because we're not living in a place, there is no such, uh, the Green Party has officially repealed as a matter of policy the doctrine of discovery. We did not come to an empty place and claim it as our own. We came as a colonial occupying power and took land from others in a culture that pre-existed us by thousands of years in every corner of our great country. This happened. So we need the truth, and then we need to move to reconciliation. And my great hope is that with Bill C-61 and other measures like it, which I thank the minister from the bottom of my heart for her hard work, and for the hard work of the Anishinaabek nations that took this to a referendum and passed it community by community, nation by nation, that we're taking concrete steps to really understand. And in that understanding, we are not, and not that it's a small thing, achieving justice with Indigenous peoples, but more than that, we're enriching our society. We allow us to know in my territory, Saanich Gulf Islands, that those Gulf Islands were created when a creator reached down and picked up several smooth, dark rocks, scattered them out to the waters, and told the people gathered, those islands created by scattering the rocks, those islands are your relatives. In Senchothan, there's the human people is the translation. Whales are the whale people. Salmon are the salmon people, and they are our relatives. Our worldview will be vastly improved and inspired on the path of reconciliation 
and First Nations languages for First Nations children is an essential first step. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Haishka Siam.